Hello everybody, uh, Simon TV. Um, this is a follow-up piece uh, to the to the piece I did yesterday about um, the rise of the far right in France. So I just wanted to do uh, another piece to uh, take into account overnight um, developments, um, uh, which were rather significant. Um, and I kind of wish that I'd I'd uh, I'd read the article uh, about this um, before I put the piece together. Uh, it concerns uh, Eric Eric Chiotti. Uh, he's 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 this man. Um, he's the leader of the 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 French Republican Party. Um, now, uh, just a little bit of history about about how French politics works. Um, since the end of World War Two, the the centre left and the centre right has has switched. It's mostly mostly the Republicans. Um, centre right have been have been in office with interspersed with short periods of the of the um, socialist led coalitions uh, and um, uh, uh, Kioti is the is 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 the leader of um, the Republican Party um, they they are Gaullist uh, which means that um, they follow in the in the tradition of uh, Charles de Gaulle uh, who was, you know, probably the most significant statesperson of um, of the twentieth century, certainly of of France. If you don't know who he is, um, he uh, he was a, a military leader, um, prominent in World War Two, led the French Free Forces after the capitulation of French to to Nazi Germany, uh, and um, restored democracy, and then founded the. The Fifth Republic. Now, um, this guy is really, really significant in in French politics, um, and from the, the from the Anglo-Saxon point of view, we we kind of look back on the Cold War as being NATO versus the Warsaw Pact, right? Like the United States led coalition against the Soviet Union um, based coalition. Well, th that that's quite an oversimplification in many regards, and it really is when it comes to France. Now, um, Charles de Gaulle was. I think it would be fair to say French chauvinist. He certainly uh, looked to develop uh, France as very much an independent power, and with that in mind, he um, he he formed very very cordial relationships with Germany, uh, which is a, a former prisoner of war of the Germans would have taken uh, quite a lot to do. But the 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 real politic of it was to have a central European counterbalance to. To the to, to the sort of the duopoly between the Soviet Union led Warsaw Pact on one side and the American led um, uh, NATO on the other, and he did things like he pulled France out of um, uh, NATO command at one point, even though even though uh, France maintained its membership and uh, also had had France have its own uh, independent um, nuclear. Uh, deterrent. Uh, all right, so he's he's really really significant in in French politics, uh, and it is fair to say that that he is a a, a hero of the French Republic. Um, certainly, if not the most significant uh, French person of the twentieth century, very very close to it. All right, now um, the the political um, the political uh, ideology that that he represents is encapsulated these days by the Republicans. All right. Now, like ha has happened in other parts of Europe, what the French uh, mainstream parties have done is, as as has happened all over the place, is um, is kept the far right parties uh, out of office. In in French, this is this is called the uh, the cordon sanitaire, uh, the sanitary cordon. All right. So it's a refusal to ever go into coalition. Um, with the far right parties now, this this is evaporating all over Europe. Um, it happened with uh, Gert, Gert Wilders in in uh, the Netherlands over the last few months, where the the far right parties are becoming so prominent, uh, the mainstream quote unquote mainstream right wing parties can no longer really keep them out. Okay, and that changed overnight in France, where the Republicans said that they are prepared to effectively go into into um, uh, a coalition with uh, Rassemblement National, um, Le Pen's party, uh, and this is on the front page of Le Monde today. Um, uh, what it's saying is that um, uh, 
uh, is that uh, he's announcing an accord between the two parties and uh, crucially uh, uh, 12 uh, deputies from the Republicans have agreed with that. So the, the, the issue that, uh, that Kioti has is, and I, I don't think I'm pronouncing his name right, but I'm just not quite sure. The issue he's got is that um, for the majority of the Republicans, they are absolutely incandescent with rage about going into coalition with the far right. Okay, now why is he doing that? Well, it's because of the it's because of the results in the in in the general election, which I'll bring up here. And hang on, I better come back to this window so I can see. Okay, all right. Look, if you look at the um the 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 election results from the the um, European elections, you can see that RN that's uh that's um the far right. Uh, they got thirty one point four percent of the vote, by far the most. Um. A BE, which is which is uh, Macron's party, socialist based, but kind of se they would consider themselves centrist. I would say they're more sort of social democratic. They were the next party with fourteen point six percent. Revelia, they're they're just about um, the same. Um, they're they're uh, they're the traditional socialist party, right? Like once upon a time, between them and the Republicans, they 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 dominated French politics. And then uh, LFI, which is which is like th they're far left extremists. They're kind of like the Green Party, you know, communist, environmentalist. Well, environmentalist in the terms of that they they um they they're into all of that uh, climate nonsense. Okay, uh, but um, what's really really critical is coming down to to LR. They got a measly seven point three percent of the vote. All right, now this is. This is really significant. That's seven point three percent of the vote of what has traditionally been for the last seventy or eighty years um, the the primary right wing party. They're not really the the they're the um, the successes, right? Because the way that French politics work is is that um, parties kind of uh, form and evaporate and form coalitions and, and that sort of thing. But um, they can trace their lineage. It's very true to say through Jacques Chirac. And um and and Charles de Gaulle. Uh, all right, so it's really really significant that they're prepared to go into coalition. And if you look at the balance, that means that um that of the the sort of the three mainstream, not really mainstream, but the the three left wing parties uh, who came second, third, and fourth in the European elections, there's the potential for them to um uh, uh to form a coalition. All right, and um the real politic of it. Uh, for Chioti is that that for um, for the Republicans, their only chance at getting into office is through coalition. Now he personally is is a droit, um, uh, uh, the right wing of the party. The only sort of really like the Republicans are 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 really right wing. They're not like centre right like we get in in New Zealand with um, like the National Party or you'd get in the UK with the Conservatives. They are genu genuinely a right wing party. The only sort of real bone of contention between the Republicans and and the RN is that the Republicans are traditionally uh, Gaullist, uh, pro-European, whereas um, whereas uh, uh, the RN are not. On every other issue, there is not an awful lot of difference um between the two parties at least on paper i think you know it, it would be fair to say that the ideological underpinnings of of uh, both are very very different um yeah uh uh the rn is certainly much much further to the right um just just a a, a um a quick comment on uh macron and the um uh and the renaissance party uh Fr French politics doesn't doesn't um, doesn't work a lot like we think in the Anglosphere, okay? Um, and this this comment I saw there was a, a comment from Katrina Biggs on my my Substack, which uh, which uh, I wanted to respond to in that regard. Uh, Katrina Biggs, she's a, a a prolific producer of content in New Zealand, and you should follow her. Follow her X account. Follow her on Substack. She's well worth listening to. She writes some very, very fascinating things, and also she's drop dead gorgeous. Um, talking about uh, wokery now, um, wokery is not an issue uh, in France like it is in the Anglosphere. Okay, so Macron is a globalist, 
and he's um he's he's you know he is center left but that all of that sort of wokery stuff that you get from people like um Ardern, that he's often lumped alongside and um and justin castro in canada just doesn't really apply right to to in 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 french thinking and certainly in french political thinking wokery is just anglo-saxon particularly american nonsense they want nothing to do with okay uh so that's kind of the story of of them but uh yeah coming back uh, to these two guys um this this is really really significant like this is probably enough to ensure that that Bardell is going to be um, the next prime minister but it's going to be really interesting over the next little while to see what um the reaction is uh, uh inside in, inside the republican party uh, that, that's probably another aspect i should i should touch on is that um that the french elections that they're not like in you know it's really hard in the uk uh, for the reform party to get seats and all of that sort of stuff because of the um because of first past the post well um french politics doesn't work like that like it's 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 not proportional representation like we have in new zealand um but it's it's kind of in between with like this two-tier voting system where everyone sort of puts their name into the hat and then two candidates um go to a runoff right and that kind of encourages um um the success of more minor parties and it encourages um um the formulation of um of coalitions and parties uh, evolving into other parties and and so on and so forth so it's quite convoluted how the the history of these parties all kind of works together uh, all right so what you tend to get is more sort of like broad ideological trends rather than than a particular party that that lasts for a, for a long long time but with that said the republicans and the socialists who have generally div um, dominated french politics for the last many many years you know you look at these statistics and wow they are just they're just insignificant right they've got to be forming coalitions um with with other parties that they consider radical uh and, and that's reflective of just how polarized um uh politics has become uh, uh, around the western world and and particularly in europe uh, all right, so that's kind of a really quick overview for an Australasian audience. I'm I'm being really broad here. I know it. I'm not quite getting into as much detail as perhaps um, some people would like, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm trying to do this uh, brief and high level. All right, uh, Simon TV, uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you found this interesting. Um, as as I said, I'm going to do pieces like this to camera uh, as when stuff comes up that interests me, and uh, and um, I hope you'll enjoy watching. Okay, that's uh, all from me. Thank you very much. See you next time.